Hi everybody, this is Suzanne Spooner, QHHT Level 3 Practitioner in Des Moines, Iowa. And I um, am here in my office. I'm getting ready to start a session here in just a little bit. But wanted to give you a little bit of an introduction into this next uh, session segment clip that I'm going to be releasing uh, this weekend. Uh, I wasn't planning on doing another clip so quickly. I just released one uh, maybe a week or two ago two weeks ago, um, but I kind of thought that since uh, the world's a little topsy-turvy right now and some people are going to be having more time at home, uh, that it would be a nice uh, clip to put out because it's, it's very uh, mind-opening and heart-expanding and since we're not going into fear, right? That's not what we're going to do because fear stresses our body out and that makes us more open to become sick. So we're not going to go to fear. Um, I thought this clip might be just a nice way to spend some time um, following this lovely gal, Nicole, who has been so gracious to share her whole session with us, um, share her experience of uh, a sonic priestess in Atlantis. How cool is that? Uh, I've had a lot of clients that have had lifetimes in Atlantis. This is definitely a first, the Masonic Priestess. Don't know if those existed. Um, so we follow her through her journey in that life. Um, take a little um, extra journey over to the spirit side where she gives a very interesting uh, perspective on how she plans for her next life, which I think you'll find very interesting. Uh, from there we go to her dynamic high self. Um, you'll notice something pretty cool. Um, this happens often in a QHHT session, it's so neat. The voice shifts. So you'll hear her voice um, as her high self switch into um, almost, almost like a robotic um, voice. It's pretty cool. That happens every once in a while. It's very neat. Um, it, at times, when I've had that happen in sessions, I've asked it why it sounds so robotic because it'll be so surprising to the client and they say it's just actually how the uh, energy the frequency of them their voice um, works through the vocal cords of their human that they're coming through uh, it's just a transmission issue i guess it's kind of cool um, you can't make that up you can't expect that to happen uh, so this is fun to, for you to hear um, very, very cool information that her high self gives. Um, at, as it happens in, in sessions, it refers to itself as we throughout a little bit here and there. So uh, towards the end of the session, what I love to do is if, if they're holding the energy up and we've got some time, I love to go into interview mode with the high self. I want to know everything. I'm just that person. So um, I asked it, you know, you are referring to yourself as we. Can you explain who you are? And this is the description it gave. It says, I speak as a greater collective consciousness of 12 separate collective consciousness of different areas of life. Got that? I'm gonna reread that, I'll go slower. I speak as a greater collective consciousness of 12 separate collective consciousnesses of different areas of life. I think I was sitting there going, okay, I can't quite fathom what all that is. And it, it dumbed it down for me. <laughs> it says, um, in your terminology, you could think of it as an oversoul or an oversoul group. So that's pretty cool. I love, I love its definition though. And we get into some more questions. We talk about um, uh, the virus. It won't call it anything other than the virus, which I think is very interesting. Um, so many wild things happening on our planet right now. And, you know, I'm just taking an observer role. I'm, you know, I'm being mindful and being smart and, and careful, but I am not going into fear. I'm kind of like, oh, this is what we've been hearing about in sessions ever since I started doing this in 2012, that things are going to get so crazy. Um, and those of us that, um, if you're listening to this recording, I think you're probably one, that um, we're here to help. We're here to stay calm and help others stay calm. And, um, you know, I, I'm that um, 
obnoxious glass half full person, I'm sure people think. <laughs> and so I'm seeing all the benefits of, of what's going on, um, mindful of you know the ones that are, are, are sick. I, so I don't want them to be sick. But the benefits are some people are getting some time off and you get to reevaluate how you do things and you get some time to think through things and research and, and explore. Um, so I think that's, that's a benefit. So I'm, I'm hoping to contribute to that endeavor um, by sharing Nicole's amazing clip. Oh, one last thing. Um, I'm doing something on this clip that I've never done before. And it's just so much fun. Um, I'm including the very end of her session after I counted her up. So you'll you'll hear me end the session with this dynamic um, collective consciousness that's coming through. Um, you won't hear me counting her out, but then you'll hear me talking to her right afterwards. Um, and it's fun to hear her her take on what just happened here and what it felt like. And, and I think that's especially good how she describes it. Um, for those of you that will be having sessions down the road or those of you that have had sessions and wondered, you know, was that, did I do that right? Um, she said she felt, um, her analogy was so cute. She said she felt both like the puppet and the puppeteer. <laughs> and that's how that can be, especially as you're allowing all this information to flow through you that you didn't know that you had, which is the whole point. Right, of, of exploring your human consciousness through QHHT. All right, um, so the Sonic Priestess of Atlantis. I hope you enjoy that. I hope you enjoy her awesome collective consciousness that came through and um, share in her excitement and joy after the session. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, I appreciate that very, very much. I wanna get this amazing work and these wonderful experiences shared with as big of a public as I can to help everybody know that they are so much more than what they've been told they are. All right, peace out. Um, keep your vibe high. Uh, think great thoughts. Take care of your body. Love your body. And do not go into the F word. All right, we've got this. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. What's the very first thing that you notice? Water. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the water. And the water is very crystalline blue. Mm -hmm. It sparkles. It's very blue. And beside the water is land masses covered with green moss, lots of green, and almost a golden like sand beach. Nice. And where are you in relation to that beautiful blue water and that land mass? standing on the sand looking out at the water. Oh, nice. And um, let's bring your focus to yourself there. When you look down at your feet, do you see those? Yes, they're barefoot. Okay. And as you move up the body, what do you wear on the body? A lightweight robe. And describe the robe for me the best you can. It's a soft, flowy material, a white or creamish in color, like a long dress. Okay, so it goes down by your ankles, that far down or not quite so far? Midway between knees and ankles. Okay. Um, is there any markings or ornamentation on your robe? Not on the robe itself, but it does have shoulder adornment. Oh, tell me about the shoulder adornment. Um, it looks gold in color with um, a point going outward on the side. It has uh, different colored um, 
a dormant inside of it, maybe a jewel. Oh, what color is the jewel? There's a red, green, and purple one. And does that shoulder adornment, does that have significance? Um, it seems to play a part in the role that this person plays. Okay. And um, do you carry anything in your hands? Yes, there is a staff, like objects. And describe that for me the best you can. It's golden in color. It's long. It penetrates into the sand below. And on the top, it extends into what looks to me like a crystal, oh. a pointed crystal. What color is the crystal? Clear. Okay. And what do you use that staff for? It's used in practice, ceremony. Do you have anything on your head? A light, lightweight adornment. And what is that like? Uh, it is almost like a halo type of crown. Do you get a sense of what that's made out of? Gold. And is there significance to that light adornment on your head? It is given to people who perform these tasks. And tell me more about the task. The task is to work with the healing of the planet and others. Okay. Does the body feel more male or female? Female. Young or old? Mid-age. And does the body feel healthy or not? The body is very healthy. And so you work with healing of the planet and of others? Yes. Tell me more about your, your role, what you do. I am responsible for holding ceremonies to help heal others and the animals on the planet. That involves spiritual and physical healing. Nice. And do you like what you do? Yes. Are there others that are around you right now? Or are you on your own by the water? At this moment, I'm by myself. All right. Anything else going on around you there that you notice? It is a very nice day with a light wind, and you can smell salt water in the air. Nice. <laughs> Sounds beautiful there. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's. Leave that scene you're looking at. Let's drift and float to where you eat and sleep at, where you live in that time that you're viewing. And now you're there. And describe for me what that is like. It's a large temple-like building. Lots of engravings and carvings. Everyone gathers to eat in this place. Describe the temple for me some more. It's quite large, at a hole. Very uh, angular, geometric-like. On, on the sides, there are smaller portions that connect to the larger one. In the engravings and the carvings, can you describe those for me? They are different uh, scriptures, people who have passed, important figures, uh, languages, uh, spells of sorts, as well as different gemstone carvings. And if you were to read some of them, what do you notice as you read them? That they are very old. They are meant to 
heal and inspire those that read them. Nice. Do you have a favorite one that you like? Not in this room. So is this inside? Yes. Okay. And this is where you normally uh, rest, where you sleep, and, and eat? This particular room is just for eating. Okay. Now, in that room, food's been prepared, just a normal meal that you would have. Maybe others there that normally are with you. What type of food are you eating that day? Lots of vegetables, colorful foods, greens, purple, orange, blue. No meat. No meat, okay. And are there others with you or are you on your own? There are others here also eating food. And tell me what they're like. Some of them are dressed similarly. Some do work together. And uh, some I do not recognize. And uh, do you feel connection to them? A few of them, yes. I work with them. Okay. Do they also reside in the same place that you do? Yes, in a different area. Okay. Very good. Anything else going on there that you notice that you want to mention? At the long end of the dining hall, there are uh, statue-like carvings of animals. Oh, tell me about those statues. They are carved out of black stone, and they looked to depict feline animals. And on the other end is a marine animal that looks like a dolphin. And what is uh, the, the purpose of those being there? Protection. Protection from what? Energies, spirits. Keeps the room feeling good, I bet. Yes, for positive energy. Doing really good. Well, let's do this. Let's leave that scene and let's drift and float to an important day in that life that you're viewing, drifting and floating to a day when something important is happening. And now you're there. And what's going on? I am in a special healing space room. It's a triangle structure at the bottom is a large pool of water that dolphins swim in. This is where people come for ceremonies and healing with myself and those I work with. Oh, tell me more about that. It's a very powerful space powered by quartz crystals as well as other energetic healing stones and sound frequencies. And how do the quartz crystals help? They work in resonance with the vibrational fields on the planet and the misalignment of the people who come for healing. Okay. And the dolphins, what's their role? They provide sensual, emotional support as they're highly advanced beings and their sonar capabilities will also enhance the abilities of the resonant crystals. Mm -hmm. People will also swim with them as is very therapeutic. Oh, yeah. So it must be a pretty big room then? It is of fair size, yes. And is it inside or outside? Inside. Okay. And you said that's where you do your work to help with the people? Yes. And walk me through what, you're, what you do. How do you help them that way? People in my family lineage have done this for a long time. People will come here when they are seeking guidance, health, wisdom, knowledge. My family keep this knowledge and pass it to those who need it. And so what would there be a, a title or a name, uh, that, a role that you hold? It 
would be along the lines of what you may describe as uh, sonic priestess. So you're working with the sound and the vibrations? As well as the crystals. Okay, beautiful. And so what's going on there that day? Right now I am by myself, but there is a group ceremony to be performed in a little while. And tell me about that group ceremony. It is with four other women who perform the same work that I do. And what will the ceremony be for? It is our intention to do this work to help calm the negative energies of others that are performing not conducive tasks. And how specifically do you and your group do that? We come together in circle, each with our own abilities with chants, songs, and music, using the vibration, and the quartz crystal amplifies the energy, which the quartz crystal capstone of this room sends out energy that is dispersed across the planet. Oh, my. So so you're there, and you're going to be doing the ceremony um, soon? Yes, so then what happens next? The women join me in this room and the ceremony and incantations begin. One woman I have done this with for many years, the others we are teaching. And just walk me through the ceremony. What are you doing? We are using our connection with the planet and the grid to bring through the powerful energies, healing of the planets from the core up outwards to heal the misalignment. But we fear it may not be enough. Why do you think it might not be enough? Because the negative work of the others is outweighing the positive ones that we are doing and others are doing. What do you know about the the non-positive work that's going on right now? There are, are people who are doing work that is not in alignment with the planet and others. Experiments, work, destructions, uh, one could call abuse of power and knowledge. So the four of you get together, and then what happens? We perform and instruct those that are with us. There is a lot of light and energy in the room. It can get very warm, and the sound is very loud. It penetrates your body as it's meant to do to push out what is not in alignment and bring back in what you need at that very moment. How does that feel to you when that's occurring? It's very pleasant. Nice. Is the ceremony a long one or a short one? It's relatively short, maybe about an hour's duration. And what happens when you're done? It feels very good and very heavy, but you feel very connected. And the idea is that the energy is transmuted across the, all the other connected areas of the planet, but the other side is too strong at this moment for it to completely work. So what happens then? Nothing at this very moment, but we will keep trying. Are there others like you that are also trying to transmute that negative energy? 
Yes, there are many groups. Are you connected with them? Yes, we do. We connect with them sometimes in larger gatherings. We do similar work, but each has more of a speciality. I see. And, and again, what is your speciality? Healing with vibration and crystal. And the, uh, the other woman that you've worked a lot uh, with, what is her speciality? Animals. Connections with animals and sound. Nice. Okay. Anything else happening there that you notice that you want to mention? The space feels like home to me. I enjoy coming here. Is this a space um, away from the temple that you were at first, or is it the same? It is the same, but this entire area is very welcoming to me. I see. Okay. I love the ocean and being close to nature. It sounds beautiful. All right. Well, let's leave that scene that we're looking at. Let's drift and float to another important day in that life that you're viewing. And now you're there. And now what do you notice? It's very dark, and I don't feel very well. Tell me more about that. I get the sense that what we do is not working correctly. We don't have the capacity to outweigh what is being done by the others. And so what do you think about that? I feel like I want to leave, like there is nothing else that I can do. I want to take others with me. Some people are of like mind and also want to leave. And so do you get a sense of if you were to leave, where that would be, what it would be like? Another part of the planet, if possible, we do not feel like we will be able to stay here. Okay. And how would you travel to that other part of the planet? We have the ability to teleport to different areas of the planet that are also set up along this same grid. Oh, tell me about that, about teleporting. It's done through the vibration of quartz crystals in different areas on the planet. And have you done that before? We have done it before, yes, but not to the magnitude we will be this time. And how will it be different this time? We will not be able to go back. Oh, I see. Okay. When you have teleported before, tell me what that experience was like. It feels as you teleport that you no longer have a physical body, but you are completely aware of your existence, and then your molecules will reassemble at the point of destination. And when you've done that before, what was it like where you teleported to? Another one of our areas, very beautiful, island-like, tropical, warm weather, summer breeze, big trees, lots of water, many islands close together. And you did you do some work on that island? Sometimes, yes. More so to visit at this time. I see. Okay. But now it's going to be a, a bigger deal, um, a bigger teleportation than what you've done in the past, you said? Yes, we will not be able to go back because we fear the entire area will be destroyed. And are there just a few that are going with you or a lot? There are many who want to leave, but not all are coming. And so... Are you preparing for that time of going, or what are you doing at this point? I am preparing for that time of going. There are four others with me. One of them is my close friend that I work with. 
And what are you doing to prepare? Gathering basic necessities, bringing items with us that we use in ceremony. Important items are coming with us. So you can teleport those as well? Yes, but only a small amount. And so what are the most important ones that you're bringing? Textbooks, literature, language, our sacred tools that we work with, crystals, and clothing. And do you know where you'll teleport to? Yes. And what will that place be like? It is the islands that we mentioned earlier. Okay, very good. And so um, as it's getting closer to time to to do that teleporting, um, just walk me through what, what you're doing at that point. In a bit of a panic, getting things together, making sure everyone is there, as we will only be able to go once, and we do not want to leave people behind. And so how do you, how are the other people prepared? Do, have they done this before as well, all of them? Not to this extent. We travel for leisure, but this is permanent. We would not be able to come back. Some family members have already died. How have they died? From misuse of energy, misalignments, improper work, work backfiring on them. This is what you're fleeing from? Yes. Okay, understood. Okay, so do you have your group assembled now, ready to go? Yes, we are ready to go. And tell me, explain to me as you're, as you're doing this work, how this all happens. We are all using our combined knowledge. The teleportation system is activated through thought and connection with the grid lines on the planet and where you want to go in conjunction with powerfully used crystals. You must have a clear intention of where you want to go or you may end up nowhere. And so do you share that with the others that haven't done the teleportation before? Yes. Not everyone is successful traveling over. We do lose two. Oh, what happens to those two? They do not make it to the other side and do not know where they ended up. Okay. Well, that's interesting. So as you're traveling, as you're dismembering and traveling, can you tell me more about what that is like? It goes seamlessly for some of us to arrive there. It is sad that we cannot go back, but it must be done because our space will no longer be there. When we arrive on the other side, there's sadness because we can no longer return. But we are also happy that we are here and hope that the destruction does not reach us on this area. And when everybody arrives, what do you do then? We try to go in secret and hide. We do not want to make our presence known to the others or anyone else, for we fear they may try to find us. I see. And so where do you hide at? What is that like? We create homes on the island, basic homes, nothing that would attract attention. We still practice our work, but only amongst ourselves at this time, for we fear it's too dangerous to try and help the grand scale at this time. What might happen if you try to help the grand scale? 
the others in the main city may be able to find us and track us down through energetic resonant signatures. Do you get a sense of um, if and when that tragedy over there happens, the destruction? It would happen probably around perhaps a year or so after this time. Okay. Would you have a feeling or an indication of that, or would you not know about it? Oh, yes, you would know. And how would you know? Because when the event occurs, it creates a great misalignment on the planet. This abuse was very, very strong, and it will not be forgotten for a very long time. It is evident in the skies, in the lands. You can feel it in the air. Essentially, it implodes upon itself. And where you're at, you feel that you're probably farther, farthest away so that you don't have to worry about that so much? Yes, we are safe here and not connected to the main disaster. And do you stay just within your group or does, do you start making outreaching to others that are there on that island? I stay within my group at this time. And how is life once you're settled in over in the new place? Fairly secluded. Others did end up coming this way as well. They did not come with me, but they did end up coming here on their own accord. We did meet up with them and create homes together living fairly basically, but still practicing our work on a very smaller, toned-down scale. You said that you brought texts with you, is that right? Yes, they're more like a tablet text. And what information is on those? It would be spells, incantations, knowledge of ancient works. It's, in, it's inscribed mostly on these. It's kind of like a rock inscribed with pictures and images that is sealed energetically. And why is it sealed energetically? To keep it safe so that it does not erode. And when you look at those um, rocks that are engraved, what knowledge do you read from those? The proper use of quartz crystals. And what is that? The proper use for quartz crystals is done for balancing energies, not for the misbalancing of energies not used for destruction, not used for creation, it's used for balancing. When used in the manner that it was on the mainland, it was abused for practices that some of us did not approve. And is there anything else going on there that day that you notice that you want to mention? I do like this island. It is very beautiful. I have come to enjoy it, although I miss the lavish temple I worked in before. I miss the connection with the animals and dolphins. This island has a lot of wild animals, but they're not the same. Oh, I see. All right, you're doing very, very good. 
Let's leave that scene you're looking at. Let's drift and float to another important day. And now you're there. And now what's happening? I am a little bit older at this time. The disaster that happened has occurred and it is not very pleasant at all. What do you know about it now? The entire main city is destroyed. It no longer exists. We are here and thousands are dead. Maybe more. And do you know what happened at the time of the destructions? The main power source of the city imploded upon itself and it self-destructed imploding itself and all who remained there and how did you become aware of that you could feel the vibrations the sky turned red oh the sky was very red full of destructive energy shooting out into the sky right from the center of the main city one would guess I could not see it from here the city but you could see the energetic discharge going out from the planet and um, did that affect where you're at indirectly yes causes weather pattern changes, shifts on the planet physically, massive earthquakes, tsunamis. We were safe at this time. Okay. And so what else is going on there that day? We are making some food but it's sad. Someone we know passed away of old age. Oh, tell me about that one. He came over with us when we originally teleported to this island. At that time, he was already old, but now he is very old and recently passed away. He was a grandfather to one of the my fellow women healing workers. And so when somebody passes away, how does your culture recognize that? We return them to the earth and honor their presence by passing down any any sacred tools to their next in family line okay thank you for that let's go ahead and leave that scene let's drift and float to the very last day of that life the very last day and now you're there and what's happening why will it be the last day It's the last day because I'm saddened by the state of the world. I'm choosing to leave consciously, not of old age. And tell me about the state of the world that has you so sad. I feel that it is very much out of balance. I do not ever want to see this happen again to anyone on this planet. There, I'm by myself at the moment. One of the things that I was taught through my lineage is that we have the ability to leave our life at the moment of our choosing if we so choose to do so. And I have chosen this time for me to leave. Excuse me. Um, can you describe a little bit of... of how that process works? 
Yes, I would go into a deep meditative state alone by myself and connect with all of those that came before me and choosing this time to exit my body peacefully. It's very simple to do and painless. <coughs> Many of our people use this practice. And are you taught what it'll be like when you do that? It feels like water or air it feels as if you reconnect to everything instead of being connected only to one thing. All right. And when you do decide to leave the body, are you still on your own or are there others with you? There are others with me, but I have told them of my decision, so they are aware. And they are happy for me, as we would be for anyone who chooses this. Whatever has happened has happened. You've left that body, drifting and floating back to the other side. And now you're there. And from this perspective, you can look out over that entire amazing life and know and see everything that was important about it. What were some of the lessons that you learned in that life? I learned that it is important to keep balance. I learned the proper use of technologies. It was important for me to see what can happen when technology's wisdom and knowledge is abused. I was there to ensure that this never happens again. And every life has a purpose. What was the purpose of that life? The purpose of that life was to learn to heal and to help others heal and to learn the knowledge and use of crystals and family. Do you feel like you accomplished what you went there to do? Yes, I did what I accomplished, wanted to accomplish, even though I had to witness the destruction. That must have been very, very hard. It was very hard, very sad. Many lives were lost. All right. And now that you're back on the spirit side, take a look around and describe for me what that is like. I feel formless, but yet can see many things. I feel a lot of connection to different energies, colors, waves, Shapes, geometries, hmm. forms. And it's very quiet, actually. Hmm. Do you feel like there's others with you, or is this a place to be by yourself? Right now, I feel as if I am alone. And do you get a sense of what you'll be doing there? Analyzing, reviewing, taking note of what occurred recently, applying knowledge going forward. And when you're analyzing that life, um, tell me what 
what that process is like. Like a checklist. Did I do this and that and the other thing? What did I not learn? What do I want to take forward? Anybody that I would like to continue my journeys with? It's interesting. That is. So as you look at your checklist, um, what stands out for you? Kindness, learning to heal, proper use of power, conscious decisions, love. And connections. Nice. All right. Anything else about that process that you notice that you want to mention? For some reason, it feels very digital. Oh, tell me a little bit about that. It feels me mechanical, technical. but yet soft at the same time. So not real emotional? No, there's a detachment from emotion in this space. I feel that it wouldn't be conductive for future planning if you were attached to emotions in this space. I see. That makes sense. Is there, um, are there others that are guiding you through that process, or is this one that you, again, do on your own? I feel I don't need guides at this point. It feels like I've done this many times before. Okay. Very good. You chose to show her this amazing life as the sonic priestess um, teleporting to far places to avoid the disaster. Why was it important to show her that life? It's important to show her that life because she has many questions about it in this one. So what do you want her to understand about that life? She is to understand that this was a life in Atlantis. She has thought about this many times wondered if there were past connections to that place. And yes, there were, and Lemuria. And her work that she did in that life, uh, tell us more about what she did. She was responsible for healing all of the people who came to see her and her gifts. She came from a long lineage of ancestry in Atlantis with priestesses and priests, male and female lives on Atlantis with varying roles and degrees. This particular one is closest to her as she also carries strong dolphin energy in this life. Explain that to her. The fun, playful side that comes out when she is in complete comfort comes from the joy she experienced working with the dolphins. The innocent childlike demeanor that she carries in this life also comes from the dolphins. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. You think that might surprise her? She's had ideas about it, but now it's confirmed. Nice, okay. And how does that life of the Sonic Priestess relate uh, directly to this current life. She needs to be working with healings, especially with sound and crystals, working with others. She is too much by herself at this time. She says that she kind of feels comfortable, though, being on her own. There's no growth in comfort. <laughs> oh, amen to that. Um, Okay, so you, you're saying it'd be better for her to get out amongst others and do this crystal and sound healing? Yes, and grid work as well. She must be working in groups. 
and tell her why that's so important. It's important because her physical structure on this planet has been configured to work as an energetic conduit that can't be done alone. You must be with others, working in conjunction. And when she does work with others in conjunction, how does that change or affect her and, and others in the planet? Her physical being is wired as such that she has the ability to transmit energies from above dimensions into the planet's core. She's thought of this before and smarter than she thinks she is. This is correct. Can you explain that for me a little bit, bit more? That sounds like a very interesting concept. The higher dimensions need ways to bring in higher energies and frequencies onto the planet since there are no physical structures on planet earth to do this at this time beings are brought to the planet to perform these tasks wired and constructed in such a way that they have the ability to transmit higher dimensional frequencies from above and others through their vessel into the 3d world on the planet it is very stressing on the body so how can she best uh, do that work and maintain a healthy, happy body? She must exercise more and eat no more meat. And, and when she exercises more, eats no more meat, how will she feel different? How will that affect her? The way that her body is constructed does not process heavy, dense foods. It will allow her channels to be more open and conductive to allow the energies to pass more freely without causing so much stress on her physical body. Okay, understood. Thank you. All right. Anything else about that time in Atlantis? Oh, where did she go to? Where did she teleport to? You would know this place now as Hawaii. Did many people teleport at that time that Atlantis went down? Small groups did, yes. Many to that location. Well, the understanding of how to teleport, is that coming back or is it already on the planet? Scientists are experimenting with technologies. What about the souls that have done it in the past that are back on the planet now? Will they remember it? There are those that can do this already. There are those that can split their bodies in two places at once. It is, would be called biolocation. Oh, sure. Okay. And any information about that that you want to share with Nicole? She has thought about this before, throwing around the idea that she has one foot in two worlds, and she is correct not consciously aware of the ability to do such, but has had the experience of being in two places at once, as well as living past memories in the current state at the same time. She has discovered the ability to send messages in this time to her past self in hopes of correcting or alleviating things in the current state, but that is not advised as things happen for a reason in a certain pathway. The the knowledge and acknowledgement of the ability to connect to oneself in the same life in a past experience of themselves or similar situations may be known as deja vu, but it is actually a connection to different times and places. Wow. Okay. Not advised to do it because those that timeline needs to play out, but is there a way that, that you can use that understanding to benefit yourself? Yes, in the opposite direction. Direct it forward, not backwards. <laughs> and tell us about what it's like when you direct it forward. The difference is there is an unknowing. You wouldn't know you are making that connection if it is moving forward. But having the knowledge when these experiences pop up of familiarity of a location, familiarity of a person paying more attention to that, as those are the people and places that need to be connected with. Okay. 
Well, that's fascinating. Thank you for sharing that. Um, as you know, she came into the session with a beautiful list of questions. Would it be okay to start in on that list? Yes. And would it be appropriate to ask for a scan of her body, please? Yes. Okay. Just tell me where you are scanning, where you're focusing on for healing. We do expect full and complete healing today. And where are you focused at? Digestive system. Mm -hmm. And what do you see with her digestive system? Is out of balance. What causes it to be out of balance? Nutritional issues, physical exercise issues. Her body works overtime to digest food due to missing component. What's the missing component? The gallbladder. Oh, that's right. She had that removed. Yes. Um, so share with her the information that she needs to know about that. The physical body is best nourished through fruits and vegetables and nuts, natural foods, non-GMO and organic. Well, that's interesting that you say that because she developed a sudden severe allergy to um, most citrus and nuts. Um, so explain why that happened. Positional imbalance, location issue. She's not where she needs to physically be. She said that those uh, allergies happened when she moved up to British Columbia? That's correct. Okay. And so she's in a place where she shouldn't be, so the body was responding by rejecting those foods that are actually best for her? Yes, actually. Isn't that funny? That's pretty interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, there's a lot to unpack there. So we want her body completely healthy, um, so that she can do the work that she's here to do. Um, so what does she need to know going forward in order to have everything in alignment? Avoid sugars, unnatural sugars, sorry. That includes refined... Uh, unrefined breads such as white breads when possible avoid glutinous foods try to eliminate meats however her body does process fish well although the fish in the, your sea are not exactly of the most nutritional value at this time Moderate use of poultry in transition phase is okay. Organically sourced is best. Continue eating foods such as apples, pears, bananas. The ability to eat berries can be healed. The ability to eat nuts can also be healed and will be healed. But the best source of nutrition for her is going to be healthy fruits and vegetables with nuts as protein. Okay. So if she's allergic to these foods in the location she's in, what do you recommend that she does? Do not eat these foods until located in the proper area. And what is the proper area for her? There are several, and any of them would be acceptable at this time. And what would those areas be? Scotland, Ireland...
in her current country. Whistler. Also areas in Oregon. Although moving to other countries is not an easy task. But Whistler in her own country would be beneficial to her? Yes. Well, Arounded in nature and mountains, she must be close to nature, mountains, anywhere that has a lot of natural surroundings. Big cities, not advisable. Okay. And she says she loves where she's at now just because she's by the ocean. Yes, it is very healing for her. The negative ions that come off of the ocean are very healing, which hold a strong connection to this life we recently explored. Mm, understood. But you're saying that location just isn't conducive for her overall? It has a very stagnant, slow energy. There is not much room for growth there. Even though she is there now, lots of lessons have been learned that are beneficial, but she is very stubborn and slow to accept change. Hopefully this will help. Well, she says that she felt like she's on the verge of a move, that she's getting all of her ducks in a row and... She won't be, need to be tied down anywhere. That's correct. There will not be any ties after this time. And if she's wondering about how she'll support herself financially with a move, what would you tell her? She has little self-trust in her self-worth. All she needs to do is put herself out there. She has the ability, once following in her natural footsteps, and the reasons that she is here... The people, the money, the products will follow, but she must have the courage to take the steps to get there, and that is one of the main lessons of this life. She must learn to stand up for herself, do what needs to be done, and not worry about what anyone or other people have to say about it. It's very important. So that's one of her big life lessons? Yes, she must stand in her true natural power and not be afraid of what other people say or think. She does this amongst groups of friends with similar interests, but is scared of doing that amongst others who have no idea. Hmm. Thus, her place of current work is very restricting as it is a closed mind, dry environment. What would be a uh, more open-minded type of environment for her to focus her working energy on anything related with crystals sale of crystals working with crystals having an own business energy work healing work sound healing any of these things would be successful if the drive is put behind them she is supported but is scared to take these steps for fear of not being able to support herself. In this life, she comes from a poor or family background and is scared of not being able to live. And that's where the fear comes from. She, you're telling her she does not have to worry about that if she just keeps following through? That is correct. She has the support behind herself, but in the physical body, she must accept it. Perfect. And when she does that, what will she notice? As she's noticed before, when she makes the right choices, things naturally fall in line. She knows to look out for different signals for ways of information is sent to her through dreams, through numbers, through synchronicity, through people. Those kinds of signals will help her as to where she needs to go and what she needs to do. And back to her body, um, are there other places that you're scanning? A lot of these would be resolved with better food issue, food management issues. Okay, and again, you say she should have more of what? <clears throat> Natural foods, fruits, 
vegetables, not many sugars that are not natural. That is a big problem for her, sugar. Can you help her not crave the sugar anymore? <clears throat> yes, we can do this. That'd be nice for her, wouldn't it? It would. She doesn't even want it anymore, therefore the body doesn't require the craving? Yes. She compounds it on top of foods that contain it, such as bread, without knowing that it metabolizes into sugar in the bloodstream. Oh, sure, okay. And that is where some of the excess comes from, not necessarily from other foods, but from foods that you would not think contain or create sugar. I see. I mean, and she's also, you're saying it needs to stay away from gluten anyway, so that would help? Yes, gluten-free products will work, but are still not ideal due to the amount of chemicals contained in these artificial products. Right. Okay, so more fruits and vegetables. Um, when she gets into the location she's supposed to be in, she'll be able to handle the nuts, the citrus, the berries? That's correct. Okay. All right, very good. And you'll work with her to... to Eliminate the craving for sugar so that she can shed some of the weight off of the body that she wants to? That is correct. She's experimented with eating certain nuts, such as pecans, without issue. And that is okay. There are no issues with pecans at this time. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> she was at a music venue when uh, she was eating, uh, gosh, I think it was pad thai. Um, where her body just went into anaphylactic shock. Why at that particular time did the body have that strong reaction? At the time, it was a combination of two food allergies that she did not know of at the time, lime juice and peanuts. And also, at that time when she was there, there was a danger of going back into a path that was not conductive to her actual mission on the planet. If she had continued down this path, some of the experiences experienced after that time would never have occurred, and that cannot happen. Wow. This was a wake-up call for her to start on a healing journey of the physical body. She has done much for the spiritual side, but on the physical side, she is lacking. Okay, and that, that was her wake-up call to start taking care of the physical body? Yes. Okay. Any other advice or knowledge that you want her to have about that? About that experience? Um, about about uh, healing her physical body. Energy exercises such as Tai Chi, Qigong, are very, very conductive for her because her body is wired to move energy freely in such a fashion. Mm -hmm. fa fa fashion. Okay, perfect. Well, is it okay if I go on with her other list of questions now? Yes. Okay. She says that she feels lost in life right now with no clear direction. Uh, what would you want her to know about that? She will probably not want to hear this, but she still enjoys playing video games. It is actually a distraction. It is distracting her from her mission. She does not like to be out with people, does not easily meet new people. She must learn to interact with other people because her work is important and it will involve interactions with people and the public. It cannot be achieved sitting at home alone in a room playing video games and watching movies all the time. And that's true. Okay. And so she asked specifically, what is her purpose in this life? What is she here to do on the planet? Various tasks, some of which she is already doing and will flip-flop back and forth, but she must pay attention more so straight-lining. Successes can be made through the sale of hand-picked crystals meant to be destined to specific owners. She's very good at picking up on the energy of these objects and knowing whether or not they need to be with certain people. She would have a lot of success in this area. Also working with minerals of any kind, such as what you would call in your area, 
a Tucson gem show. Okay. <laughs> right. Also, anything to do with the hands-on work of healing is also successful. Continuing to go to spiritual groups and gatherings is successful. The work she has been recently picking up with the group of people she meets up with in Arkansas is very healing. This will not last forever, but whatever possible, she should make the effort to go there. Much upgrades, information, connections are found in this space, and she must continue to go whenever possible. Once a year is advised. So tell her more about the times that she's with that group, and especially when she was there in uh, November when she felt that intense wave of energy. Yes, she was meant to go to that gathering to have that experience, as mentioned before, and she is smarter than she lets on. Some of these answers she already has correct, but does not, but needs the confirmation in this physical life to understand. She is a conduit for energy in these situations, but she is not the one who brings it through, which is why she must work with others to have this happen. She is not the one to bring down the energy from the higher dimensions. She is one of the ones that pulls it through and integrates it into the planet for the shifting. By being in groups of people of like mind, these experiences are more likely to occur the more people that she interacts with in these experiences and other spiritual encounters and circles will help bring more and more energy into the planet, and it is very needed. It's a very important role, often under look and shoved to the side for those who work in the limelight of being channels. They channel the information, but they don't bring it through. They don't ground it. And that is what part of her mission is to do, to ground and bring through the energy, not just convey the information. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So on those multiple times where she's had that experience of that intense energy moving through her, that's what's happening? That is exactly what is happening. And that's why it's important for her to be with groups and like minds and, and to continue to ground that energy in? That's correct. She cannot achieve this work alone. She often thinks that she can, and she is good at bringing through energy f within her own vessel. But this is on a grander scale. This is for the planet, for the grid lines, and the healing that needs to be done on this world. It's not for herself, and that's why it feels so strong. And it moves one directionally when she feels this, whereas through meditation, you can move it in your body, both up and down your energetic systems. This is a wave of energy, as if somebody would dump a bucket of water over your head and it only goes one direction. Okay, that's, that's understandable. Thank you. And so when she was in Arkansas with her group in November, um, and she was accepting that wave of energy coming in, how did that change or affect the earth. It continues to bring through the higher dimensional energies. The more and more and more that this is done by people who share the same task as her creates an ease and grace for those who are not yet on that level to be more perceptive of changes in their life, more open to developing themselves. It allows the opportunity for others to be open to different experiences and raises the vibration of the people, plants, animals, and the planet itself. It's a very interesting mechanism that she has on this planet. She has always known that she has been here for a purpose, and a big purpose, and a big time of change, but did not know what it was. Her, her conscious human mind seems to think that this is some big palpable event that the whole world is going to see, but that's a mi misconception. It's done on smaller individual levels, whereas the human mind wants to make things bigger and grandiose, like it should be some great big show. But the work, the important work, is often done energetically in the background. For if it was a big spectacle and show, the populace could not handle it. So she's helping with that background work, helping everything to get where it needs to be? 
That's correct. It also upgrades and transmits energies and frequencies along the planets, the grid lines, which fluctuate and change over time, of course. But they are all connected to different sacred sites on the planet and different energy centers and grid power points on the planet. So when it's received and transmitted in one area, it affects all the others on the planet. So if you were to think of the, in in like the energies of a Taurus, how it flows in circular motion, each time these transmissions are received, it flows throughout, around, and over, all to the areas that need it. Wonderful. It is a soft mission, and sometimes she gets the idea that she's not on the right path because she's not one of the people who has a big website with lots of interests or the dynamic to attract lots of people or clients to her work. And that's okay. That's not what she's here to do. She is meant to do work in the shadows with smaller groups of similar missions and not to think that it is not a big task. It is a big task. It's just different. And so when she asks what is holding her back from that, what would you tell her? She's holding herself back through doubt and acceptance, thinking something is not what it is. The moment that she learns to let go of that connection or stigma, the more these things will open. And this year has been a big year of growth for her in that way. We forced her to have the connection to go to the Starseed Crystal Quest in May because, once again, she was at risk of falling off of her track. She was disassociating herself from the world, not being around people, secluding herself at home, reading books of knowledge, with that part is acceptable, but not everything else. She would go to work, come home, read a book, which was good, watch a movie, play video games, go to sleep, and repeat. That's not acceptable. It's not what we need on the planet. The past couple of years for her have been this way. So we started to send waves of energy to her over time to reconnect her with her true purpose, and fortunately, she listened to it. In May, we sent a visionary dream, and then the next morning, she found the information and was signed up to go to that one, which was exactly what we wanted her to do. When she went there, she was reconnected with the land, the people, the connections, and remembered more of why she was here. And she also is correct that when she came back, she got very sick. But not sick in a physical sense that you would think of on the planet, like a cold or a flu. This was a vibrational sickness. It's because her energies were being upgraded to that level where they needed to be, and they were a little bit behind, so she got very sick for a week. Sick with aching bodies, aching muscles, uh, nausea, those types of things, but it was actually her body being realigned to where it needed to be. She likes to flip-flop back and forth between being on her path and not being on her path. This is us letting her know that she needs to continue on that path and not let these distractions waver her. And in November, that was the clearest sign we could give to her that she needs to be continuing doing these things. She had doubt in the past of her abilities because some of her experiences were experienced with the use of plant medicines, and she tried to shove it off that the experiences she were having were because of the plant medicines and not because of what she's here to do. In November, when she was there, there were no plant medicines, there were no outside influences of any kind except the connections with the people around her, and to have that kind of experience not under the influence of anything was what we needed to have her know so that she knows that this is correct, real, and what she needs to do. All right. Okay. Thank you so much for all of that. She does ask, why does she have an innate fear reaction to the greys? That is because, as a young child, she did have experience with them. As you may already know, they are not the fearful entities that many people make them out to be. They are actually more like a drone or a worker that happen in certain factions. These are the ones that she had 
experiences with more so as a younger child for different uh, upgrades, uh, frequency adjustments, management of her physical body to handle the tasks that she was meant to take on. She fears has a fear reaction to these because her childlike mind did not have the knowledge to associate what these beings were actually doing and was relying upon media-fed movie fed information to her to make these assumptions these were not negative in any way these were loving encounters she also needs to know and she has had this ex experience or thought in the past she does have several hybrid children and should not be afraid of them because they are part of her family and energetically help her along her path as well as others we hope to set that fear aside well, explain to her more about her hybrid children. She doesn't have physical children in this life. No, and she will not be. The hybrid children are children that she has helped create in other dimensions that will then later on incarnate into the planet with these higher fifth dimensional energies and beyond. Some may call them, uh, terminology may be crystal children, uh, indigo children of those nature, much like she herself is, because in a way she is one. Um, I do not know best how to explain that, but she is. And those hybrid children, are they aware of her? They are aware of her, but she does not consciously know of them. Do they have a message they would like to give to her? that they love her and support her and want her to know that they are with her during important moments of her life. Oh, nice. Okay. All right. So she talks about several years ago she had a dream. She doesn't think it's a dream. She was taken aboard a ship by a blue being. They talked. She was told information, had experiences. She was holding a uh, a four-dimensional cube covered in golden symbols. Gold symbols covered the ship as well. The cube was familiar to her. Um, she wants to know more about this. Did this really happen? Yes, that did really happen. Once again, she's smarter than she thinks she is. She second-guesses the information she receives from her higher self, us, and others. She must know that this was a Pleiadian being that visited her. The blue essence was that of the healing vibration of their species. At that time, it was not advisable for her to have a full-on remembrance of this experience or visual experience, but certain portions of this were allowed for her remembrance, such as the experience of leaving the home and going to the ship. These are mild, soft experiences that provide small amounts of confirmation so that you can move forward with your life. Aboard the ship, she was reminded of ancient knowledge, of different tasks, of things she's done. The cube in question is a artifact that has followed her through multiple lifetimes and contains a lot of the information that she has carried forward from life to life, which is why it felt so familiar. The golden symbols and languages written on the cube and along the walls of the ship are different forms of communication and languages from different galactic beings across time and space that she has had contact with or has lived lives in. They're not necessarily important, but they're there as a reminder to let her know of all the accomplishments that have happened for her soul over the course of time, as she is a very ancient soul. Also going back to the points of form creation, with geometrics and shapes and forms and symbols, which is also why she is very drawn to these things, because they are the basis of physical matter. Shapes, triangles, formations, sounds, vibrations. It's all the vibrational form that you come to see in physical matter. So seeing this information and touching the cube was a way of softly reminding her in this lifetime that these are things she has experienced before and are familiar with. She gets joy from creating sacred geometry by hand with a compass, pen, and pencil, and we 
would encourage her to continue to do this as it opens up that part of her mind that has connections to those very ancient uh, formation experiences with uh, sound, form, and geometrics. I would encourage more work into that area. She has created some soul blueprint drawings for people as well, and also will have continued success with that. When she sits down in a quiet space and connects with those symbols, it opens up that area that she needs to bring through more of. In that particular experience with the cube and the ship, the being that spoke with her is a being who has known her from the past in different experiences and has been a guide throughout different lives. She was brought there at that time because at that time she was very much focused on her path in a one, you would say, beelining direction. And that's why these experiences were more profound and open at that time, and we felt it appropriate to have that. She has also had experiences of spontaneously waking up and not being able to move, as well as screaming, but no sound coming out of her. These are moments where she's been aware of the other side and come back into her body spontaneously, but didn't have the knowledge to really fully bring back what was being said. So the information comes trickling down in other ways. In regards to the cube, there are many others on the planet who are now starting to draw this image, shape, and artwork. It is not specific and unique to her. It is a diagram, an example that's familiar across all species and different forms of life because of its basic rooted knowledge in the formation of matter. And so she is worried that she's forgotten um, important parts of that experience. Can you tell her more about the information she was told so that she can recall it? It had to do with working more so with the vibration and geometries and crystals. It still trickles down to this day, but bringing out the entirety of that information is not necessary at this time and shouldn't be in the future. It's more so, as you might say, a boot data disk. Oh, okay. As she goes through different portions of her life, different parts of this data disk will open up and provide the information that she needs at that time. But to give it all at once is not advisable. And that Tesseract uh, four-dimensional cube, um, any other information about that for her? If she was to draw this structure as a drawing, she will find great benefit from it. It would be very therapeutic. The different variations and symbols that she would draw upon it may also open up different information for her. Working with her hands brings through a lot of information for her. Tell her more about her gift with that. She's very skilled with anything artistic, and she needs to work more with that. Any t artistic task that she picks up will be very easy for her to master due to past experiences and lives working with geometry and art of different forms. For example, when she took up wire weaving, she was able to pick it up very quickly and create beautiful pieces of art in less amount of time than it would take other people. This is because she's worked in this manner with her hands and artwork in many times before. More that she does with her hands connects her to the parts of her body and brain that activate these missions. Hands-on healing is very effective with her. Anything that she can do to touch metal objects, uh, earth, water, anything in, of that nature is recommended. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> All right seems like a lot of people are getting those symbols in their dreams now. Um, knowledge is coming through the dreams a lot. Can, do you know why that is? A saying you might have is a picture has a thousand words. So when you see a sign, a symbol of some sort, it is easy to have many different meanings and connections with it. They don't have English translations. It's not 
something that can be understood in English. It can be spoken, it can be sung, but there is no direct English translation for these. It's more of a, a simulatory or vibratory experience and integration. The, they also are of different languages as well for different areas or species, times of place. Some of them have different forms. Some contain geometric shapes. Some are very fluid and wa wavy-like or uh, dynamic and sharp. They either tend to correlate with different species language or different vibrational languages. And they are all benefic. This type of language is nothing but benefic. It can, speaking it helps integrate into the body. Writing it helps integrate into the mind. And seeing it helps integrate into the spirit as well. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. They're like awakening tools and codes as well. Mm -hmm. One experience directly that she has had in this life with that one of the crystals she brought home with her from a, her first trip to Arkansas in 2013 was a big crystal that she was meant to find and bring back. It sits in her living room right now, and she has had experiences coming out of meditation with it where she has seen golden symbols spew out of the crystal and up along the walls onto the side and thought she was going crazy. <laughs> that is not the case. It is simply communication. Wow. What are the symbols trying to share with her at that time? Subconscious information. There's no conscious translation. It would be meanings of... different healing frequencies different knowledge of past experiences in different areas and also codes that need to be released back onto the planet from the time of the life that she just went through hidden and stored within these crystals that she and others worked with do you have any advice on how best to work with the crystals meditation is the best one for her. For the planet, she does this on a small scale, but more can be done. Burying certain crystals in areas that she goes to is very beneficial. When she buries the crystals, how does that change or affect things? Energy and essence is passed through intention and the touch from a person to the object. Many of these crystals have been buried within the earth for millions of years as they form. So sometimes the first human contact that they have are with the people who unearth them. Sometimes they go through violent unearthings, through unethical mining practices. Sometimes they're not. When these specific crystals come into contact with people who are meant to have them, anything that is negative that has happened to them in the past is healed by their touch. And once that information is then placed back through into the earth after being healed, it then helps continue the cycle of healing through the planet and the grids. Beautiful. Great to know that. Thank you. And um, she asks, what is her galactic star history? Which one? <laughs> All of them. You can just give us everything you've got there. Her most recent galactic history would be through the Syrians, but she has also had experience with Pleiadians and far back in her history with Octurians, the very technical side. Although in this life, the focus is more on energies and feelings, emotions, 
the fact that she is so connected and in tune with everything around her is part of the reason she has withdrawn so much because it's very overwhelming. The experiences with the past star nations are there to help her pull upon in these experiences to bring forward ways of integrating their knowledge into the planet at this time. She likes to look back upon star history as a very important thing, and it is to an extent, but it's not the real reason why she's here at this time. Knowing that she's had these experiences with these other bodies in the past should be enough to sustain that curiosity, just the knowing that she has had lives and experiences with beings on other planets. There really is not much more to it at this time than that. Well, and she does ask then, um, you, you spoke about this, but are there aspects of herself she can in integrate into her current life from her galactic star history? Yes, there is. The Pleiadians work at a very soft, supportive energy level, which is the one she is most connected with at this time. Continuing to draw upon that empathic wisdom is very useful for her, but she must learn how to put up protective boundaries. She must not be afraid of going out into public spaces and needs to learn to discern her own feelings and emotions from those around her. There are exercises and ways of doing this, and she's attempted it, but has not been fully successful in creating that full connection within herself, but disconnection from others around her when she needs it does not have to be turned off all the time but to be able to put herself in situations where she must interact with large amounts of people and the public having the ability to say switch on and off that ability is a must and she can draw upon that information by meditating or consciously connecting with her Pleiadian history as they are masters of this. All right. Now, I know we've talked a lot about this, but I don't want to leave one of her questions out just in case there's more you could share with her. She says she <clears throat> has a very strong connection to quartz crystals and sacred geometry. Why is this? The quartz crystal connection comes directly from her experiences in Atlantis and Lemuria, in each and every one of those lives on those planets, she was always connected with the crystals and did some type of work with them, whether they were healing or used in the creation of objects and civilizations, matter. She has a strong connection to them because she knows they are alive and devic beings. Inside each of them is life. There is life in everything. The rocks, the trees, the air, everything contains life. And she is able to feel that when she holds quartz crystals specifically because they each have a different vibration and reason that they're there. We much encourage her to continue working with quartz crystals of any kind, though benefit does come from working with other minerals that she has started to work with, such as moldavite, which is a combination of otherworldly materials and materials of planet Earth. That is one tool that she can use to connect with her higher lineage, and we would ask that she trust information that comes to her and not second-guess them. She likes to hear something and think to herself, oh, is that correct? Is that real? She questions it. No more questioning. When you hear something, trust it. She trusts her gut on everything else. She must trust it with this as well. The connection with sacred geometry geometry goes way back to very early lives with the creation of form, matter, sound, and vibration. She's very drawn to the symbol of the triangle, as it is a very powerful symbol, though not the only one that is important. It is one of the platonic solids and the most stable symbol of them all outside of a circle. Working with the triangle and any shape of a triangle formation is very beneficial to her, she has developed a personal meditation 
which she called, of all things, <laughs> triangle meditation, <laughs> by transferring energy from one palm of her hand over to the other and then up to her third eye in the form of a triangle and creating a circuit that way. That is the most powerful and most beneficial meditation that she can continue doing for herself because of that connection. Anything that is done with sacred geometry, including the formation of furniture in a house, paintings on the wall, drawings that she creates herself in geometry, which she does currently do and should do more of, would draw on into her connection with these things. The geometry is important because, in essence, it's formless without vibration. So it's interesting to think back upon these things and continue to draw upon them. Her connection with them is important. It does not have something that you can pinpoint outside of being one of the early beings who would bring form into matter through the use of sound, vibration, and geometries as it's the basis of all form. Beautiful. Thank you so much. <clears throat> she asks, uh, will she always feel so alone in this life and will there be a partner in this life? Once she is able to work with others and stop isolating herself, her partner will appear to her, but not until that time. So yes, she will not be alone forever and there is a partner in her future. And what will that one be like? It will be on the same level of hers or higher, equal or better. There is no substitute. She must not let herself get drawn into lower vibration energies of other people. There are many men and women who have been interested in her, but they are not of the same like mind. It would be a waste of her time to devote herself in any way to someone who is not of like mind, not necessarily similar experiences, but they must be open. They must be open to her spiritual path and journey and mission on the planet for them to have any benefit in her life. And we have protected her such as this. There is sacred energy when it comes to working with bonds between all types of life. If one was able to run rampant with such energy, it would be a danger to everyone on the planet. Every person you interact with, especially in a sexual nature, transmits very important DNA information, and you can never rid yourself of that. It is always there. So this is a form of protection for her to not interact with other people who are not on the same line of progression and once she allows herself to continue to work in these group-minded environments and continue to meet people on the same path the person will appear for her and she will know them when she sees them and well then that reminds me her friend that referred her here Amy um, they have had an amazing connection with their energy work what do you want her to know about their connection we would like her to know that her assumptions are correct. They have spent several lives together before, including some in Atlantis and Lemuria. As you may already know, her friend has had many powerful experiences as well, in different ways, shapes, and forms, but they complement each other very nicely. It's a shame that she moved away from her friend at this time, as they would have had experiences, but all is right and there are many timelines on this planet. You can move in and out of them within free choice at any time. The fact that she has chosen the one she has is not a detriment. And I will say they will connect again many, many times. They may not necessarily live together at another time, but they will continue their spiritual work together and see each other again in this life and do many more other important works on this life. They already do that separate from one another and do not know it. They consciously work together through meditation and unconsciously in the dream time. Both of them are very powerful old ancient souls and have done much work together. A most recent connection between the two would be through the lives in Atlantis. They have had spiritual priestess connections there. And their work that they've done recently in the dream time, can you share some of that with them? The whales. There is a connection with the whales and, and crust I can never pronounce this word correctly, crustaceans, dolphins, 
uh, whales, sea ma mammal life. They, these beings are ancient, ancient beings working with sound, emotions, and healing on the planet. They've been healing the planet through the waters for eons and eons. They connect with these beings through dream time, aimé more consciously than her. Her connection with them is just as strong, just not as consciously. Living where she currently lives, on the west coast of British Columbia, there is a great opportunity to connect with the orca whales in that region, even though a lot of these businesses are commercial and not necessarily of ethic practice, we encourage her to seek out the indigenous populations of the area and ask them to reveal their knowledge of these animals to her. Perhaps there may even be the opportunity for indigenous cultures to teach her more about this information on the west coast, including and involving the orca whales before she moves to another destination. Oh, beautiful. That would be a wonderful suggestion. Indeed. <laughs> um, is there anything that she didn't ask today that you wish she would have? One moment. We would have liked her to ask why in this life that she would have chosen to come in at this time. Would you like me to answer that as well? Absolutely. She has had questions about why she came to this planet at this time and whether she consciously chose to come to the planet at this time. And the answer is 100% yes. Before this life, she spent quite some time before choosing to come back down into the planet. She spent a lot of time planning this life, including the bloodline of her mother. There is long history there. Her family comes from England, primarily, with lots of Druidic history. There is a lot of history in Druid lives, in the history of her family, but not herself. I'm talking about her grandmother and her, and her great-great-grandmother and, and families of past lineage, not her physical life at this time, her family lineage. There's great history there. Investigations into druids, into anything related with the mystical side of fairies in Ireland, which is why that is such a powerful place for her to go. There are answers for her in Scotland and Ireland. There is a great history back there, including lives with witches, as you would call them. Lots of history there. We wish she would have asked that because there is knowledge there. However, when she choose, chose to came to the planet at this time. That's why she chose that family bloodline is because there's history of experiments, experience with Pleiadian, like Plei ugh, Pleiadian experiments on the planet through genetics and DNA coding. It's through these specific family lines that it is easier to bring through people such as herself with the wiring and able to handle the frequency and vibration transmissions that come through the planet to be transmuted at this very important time. So while she was making this planning on the other side, she chose her mother, and once again, she is correct in the experience that her mother had with the extraterrestrial species in her mother's youth was she herself on a ship making a contract with her mother to come through the family lineage at that time we wish that question would be asked because it's very important oh yes her mother said that she had missing time while she was driving yes she did well tell us everything you can about that experience 
Her mother has always been sensitive, as I'm sure she has said. We chose this at the time because it was an ample opportunity to come into the planet with that particular family line. And sadly, this is a confirmation she may not like to hear, but it must be said. For a while, she had blamed herself that perhaps the reason for her mother's miscarriage was her fault. And she is correct. The reason her mother had a miscarriage before she came through was because the astrological and DNA coding timelines was not correct for her to come through her mother's body at that time. So we had to have a miscarriage in order for her to come through at the present time that she did. Otherwise, when she was planning to come through during the point of the miscarriage, certain alignments would not be there to support her on her galactic path. This must be known. Oh my goodness. Does that, is that the reason for many miscarriages, or is that just one of many, many reasons? It is the reason for some miscarriages, but not all. When specific beings come through the timeline at certain times, if it is not right, a miscarriage can occur. But it is not 100% of the reason why all the time. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, well, as you know, the world's getting a little weird here, um, more chaotic than normal. Can you give us some understanding or perspective about that? It is a time of great change and many more great changes to come. You can think of it of as if a balancing act. A lot of the things that you would say quote unquote negative that are happening on the planet are actually just realizations that need to come to the surface to be acknowledged, cleansed and cleared. Even if it happens to be Terrible things you may learn about someone you look up to. Specific people dying or passing away in tragic accidents. People coming to power and making abuse of power known to the public. These things seem bad, but they must be brought to the surface in order to be acknowledged and healed, if that makes sense. For if they stay and lay dormant, things would never change. Change is never easy, and it never will be easy, for if it was, nothing would ever happen. The current experience that's happening on the planet with viral outbreaks and other things are bringing to the surface practices that should not be happening on your planet. Different things that are happening, conspiracy theories, all of these things are wild and interesting pieces of information, but you must dial them back to look at the real cause. They must be brought up to be healed and transmuted for the vibrations that are coming onto the planet are too high for these types of things to continue to happen. So if they are not cleared, they may start to happen in more violent ways, and we do not wish this to happen. So what is to be learned from the virus that's on the planet right now that's affecting the focus of, of many? People must learn to acknowledge their fears and accept them, it also brings to light unethical practices. It would not be appropriate for me to say the real reasons behind why this is happening, but the fact of matter that it is brought to light that certain cultures are consuming animals that they should not be consuming is definitely an important statement to make. I am not in any way saying that the entire planet needs to stop eating animal product because the human species is designed to be able to eat both types of materials, and it is the human that gets to decide to do as such. But we do not feel that it is the human's decision to destroy and eat these types of animals. One could say any animal. If I can give a piece of advice for people on the planet about the virus, I would say breathe, stay calm, Listen to your health advisors. And above all, help your fellow man, even in these uncertain times. It may continue to spread. It may or may not become a larger issue. That is up to you. And both resolutions are fine. Thank you. 
and acceptable. Okay. And um, when she decided to make this appointment, what was it that you hoped she received from it? She was to receive the confirmation of many things that she already knew. In this body, she needs that confirmation to move forward with certain things. She knows so much more than she thinks she does. And what she says and thinks is correct. We want her to know not to second guess or judge these feelings, thoughts, and emotions that come through and not have to continue to seek validation from an outside source. But this validation she is receiving today was much needed and was planned. But we want her to know going forward that she can continue to draw upon and connect with herself as we are right now at any time, whenever she wants, and to receive correct information. There is no need to second guess, judge, or weigh the options of what she's hearing. Mm -hmm. And how is it for you to speak through her, to be a part of this process today? It's actually quite simple. It is easy to come through and speak with her because of the alignments in her body through her genetic DNA coding. She's actually very conscious during this. She can hear and feel everything that's happening, but we can tell you right now that this is exactly how we wanted her to experience it because she needs to know this connection. We were talking about that earlier today, that this is the way we're headed. It's to be aware and connected into all this knowledge. Is that what you speak of? Yes, I do speak of that because without this knowing, there's no way to move forward. You can't understand and be able to trust the information that's being received if you constantly need to seek an outside source of validation. There is a time and place for that, obviously, of course, but in order to further advance and move to that next level, this is what needs to happen and should continue to occur, although there is absolutely no harm in the other way. And where do you see that next level being? What is that going to be experienced like for those that are ready for it? It will simply be just as easy as sitting down with yourself, using the breath, making that full connection loop to yourself, and simply just asking the questions. It will come to you as clear as day, and usually the answers will come to you before you can even form the question. You'll have the answer, and that's when you know you have it correct. Okay. <laughs> and we can trust that. Absolutely. Trust the very first thought that comes to mind. Right? Yes. The moment you do, you are stepping outside of that space. Okay. Very good. All right. And you had mentioned yourself as we. Can you explain who you speak as? I speak as a greater collective consciousness of 12 separate collective consciousness of different areas of life. Oh, my. Can you give us more understanding about that? It's fascinating. You might have terminology to think of something as a oversoul or a oversoul group mm -hmm. there is a saying on your planet that each person has a collective of seven seven people can be consciously connected or have similar experiences face shapes demeanors tones of voice uh, heights, looks, and not be related at all. Those collective groups of seven then form into other larger groups and continue up and up and up and up into larger and larger groups, if you understand. And then this collective is a collective of 12 other collectives of which I am one of. There's a lot of information amongst all of these groups. I bet. And so how did you get to be in the position that you're in? Through many, 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 many 
lifetimes of experience, of work, of all different shapes and forms, including physical beings, non-physical beings, beings from other planes, other dimensions, quite a bit. <laughs> lots of work and lots of time. Well, we appreciate you giving so much amazing information here today. I know that she is really going to appreciate it. So thank you from the bottom of our hearts for, for participating in such a beautiful way with us today. All right. Any, anything else that you can think of that's important to share before I bring her back up? A lot of people all over the planet would be very receptive to any information that she would bring through in the form of an online blog, message board, information, website, a channel, not a necessarily a channeling log, but when she goes into states of meditation, bringing forth her views on the world, on the way things are, of energy, of any topic that she has. She has the ability to reach a lot of people with her words. She doesn't realize it. She does not call herself a writer by any way, shape, or mean. But we would encourage her to start to write more and publish materials because what she has to say, the knowledge she has, and that she can pull upon from eons and eons of experience would be very well received and is very needed by everyone at this time. We would encourage books. All right, beautiful. Thank you so much. I'm sure she'll be excited to manifest something that fits that description. Do you have a final message that you would like to give Nicole before I bring her back up? And can you please translate that for us? Go with ease, grace, love, connection, sharing your gifts with humanity. Do not be afraid. We and others are here to support you. All is well. Continue your work. And what language is that? The closest connection would be the Pleiadians. Okay. Is she aware that she can speak that language? Yes, she does from time to time and also writes it. Nice. Okay. Beautiful to hear. Thank you so much. All right. Well, then, um, unless there's anything else, I'll go ahead and get ready to bring her back up. We would like to sit in the energy for a few moments. Absolutely. Tell me when you're ready.
Thank you. We were just making some minor adjustments and activation. Nice. What will she notice differently because of those? Bodily functions have improved. Energetic gifts expanded. A general sense of calm and ease. And a framework to help support her moving forward where she needs to be. Beautiful. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful session. Thank you, thank you, thank you for giving her all this information and, and energy. I'm sure she's going to be thrilled. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Oh, and how often would you recommend that she listens to her recording to get the most benefit? Initially, I would recommend at least twice a week. For this week, I would recommend every evening before she goes to sleep. And then afterwards, twice a week, when she is comfortable, I would recommend at least once a week and continuously for as long as she feels she needs it. But we could see this being beneficial for a very long time. And how, what will the benefit be when she does this in this way? It will enable her the skills to connect on the higher realms a lot more easily and give her the ability to trust the information that comes through and also the support that she needs to know that she is loved and guided and her mother has not returned to the planet at this time she would like to know that her mother will not be reincarnating into another physical body until she herself has left this planet in this life oh interesting does her mom or even her father have any messages that they would like to pass through her mom is around her all the time her father supports quietly in the background, but he is there giving quiet, gentle support. He will be returning to a physical body in the near future, I would like to say one or two years. But she herself has chosen to stay behind and support her from the other side in this important mission. She has gotten that feeling from time to time. There's a very strong connection with her and her mother. They can continue to communicate through numbers, symbols, animals. And she would like her to know that any time that she cries and feels a cold breeze around her, that her mother is right there. Oh, nice. Okay. Thank you so much for that. Welcome back, my friend. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Does it feel like you've been laying there a long time or a short time? Um... I guess a mix of the two. Yeah. My body's so heavy right now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That, that's good. Oh. That's a good marker. My eyes are watering. If you had to guess how long you've been laying there, what does it feel like? Honestly, maybe an hour. <laughs> nope. Um, if you include the induction, it's oh. been about two and a half hours. Really? We've been recording for oh two gosh. hours and ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a long time. They do not feel that long. No, time and space is just a, a wonky little thing with this process. What do you recall about what you saw, what you experienced? Quite a bit of it, actually. Like, it's like, the best way I could describe it is like being a puppet and a puppeteer at the same time. <laughs> That's a good description. That's a great analogy. And knowing that you're both at the same time. Right. Oh, my like, gosh. That's a really good description. It's like I was aware of everything coming out of my mouth, but it was just like <laughs> I had no control over it. It was just coming out of my mouth. Right. And some of that stuff I couldn't pull out of my ass if I wanted to. <laughs> and uh, there were quite a few moments where I was feeling a lot of energy running through me. What was that like? Um, it kind of like an electric shock, but without the <gasps> feeling. Right. Just like the current yeah, yeah, yeah. coming through you. Yes. And... My third eye was really, really magnetic and throbbing like it does when I get into a really deep 
good meditation. Good. Oh, good. And it felt like if you had put a magnet against my head that it would stick to it. It just had a really <laughs> strong magnetic feeling. Okay. And my, my, my body felt really heavy, but I could still feel it. Mm-hmm. But it, it wasn't uncomfortable. Um, at one point, I got a little bit of a headache in my third eye. Okay. But that sometimes happens to me when I'm in a really good meditation. I don't. I think it might just be like a s- activation center or, yes. or some energy moving through. Oh, it. I think you were quite activated throughout this oh. session today. I felt some of it for sure. <laughs> you may be teleporting back to the hotel or back to your Airbnb. <laughs> if only. I wish. You never know. What do you remember about the lifetime you saw? I remember saying and feeling most of that, to be honest with you. I think it was a really strong connection for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I I really could feel the fact that I was doing this sacred work in, like, with other priestesses and, and apprentices, I guess you would say, in that area. And it felt really strong for me. Like, I really needed to know that that was a fact. Mm-hmm. Because I had had, I've had other dreams before where I've been floating around uh, different temples with inscriptions, long pillars, right. and seeing big crystals that were powering things. But to now actually know that that is the reason why I was seeing that, it makes a lot of things click. Oh, nice. And it feels a lot better to know that. <laughs> <laughs> and how was it for you when uh, that high self information was coming through? I felt like my voice changed. It did. I didn't feel like I was talking, but I was talking. It, does, remember, it felt masculine. It, it did a little bit. You know, the, remember we were talking it's about interesting. The, that part of you has its own vibration, frequency, and tone. Mm-hmm. And the tone is, we can hear that. Um, sometimes it's very subtle. People will talk very soft. Uh, a little bit louder, a little more direct. Um, and sometimes it changes quite dramatically. As you started getting into this, it was more on that dramatic end where it was just very, it just knew what it knew and the information yeah. just kept flowing it's out. It's just like blabbermouth. <laughs> <laughs> but that's but yeah, great. Like, because- I don't think it was a masculine energy, but it felt masculine. It felt like what it would feel like if you were a male and female at the same time. Right. Integrated. Yeah. Like a whole, a whole being. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it felt like. But it was coming out of my voice and more like a masculine, dark, deeper tone. That's what it felt like for me anyway. Okay. Oh my gosh. Well, you couldn't have done any better than you did. It was just a beautiful, beautiful session. Perfect reporting. Congratulations. You did, you did the work. You did it. It was amazing. I mean, I can't believe all of that information. I don't remember all of it, so I'm looking forward to listening to it. But I remember being aware the whole time. Yeah, it's it's kind of a freaky deal now, isn't it? Being Mm -hmm. aware, but um, Mm -hmm. this it's loaded with this recording is loaded with information.